100% hypertrophy. Let's see if there's like anything left in the tank, right? And and so. Um, Great. Yeah, overhead press and pull-ups were my focus for probably a good year, maybe even a little, like maybe a year and a half. And pretty similar to you, um, I wanted to hit the 225 overhead press. And then pull-ups was actually just this summer. Um, I did 100 for six, 135 for three. So in, you know, similar ballpark. Um, and then now though, I'm, I don't know if you know this, I'm, I'm actually working with uh, Steve Hall from Revive Stronger. I think I heard that. So I think I watched it in one of your videos, right? It must be one of the, you mentioned it. We did. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's just, it's kind of going the opposite of you. So like you were doing all this hypertrophy work and I try and strength. For me, I've kind of done power building for years mm -hmm. and years. Um, and so this is just kind of an experiment of like, all right, like, let's just see what happens. Like I told them, whatever you want me to do, even if it's something I, I don't necessarily want to do, if you want to give me double sessions, if you, whatever you want to do, this is a hundred percent hypertrophy. Let's see if there's like anything left in the tank. Right. And, and so, um, we'll probably do, I, I would guess like six months and then we'll kind of evaluate, see, cause at, at this point, it's so hard to evaluate. Like a lot of people have asked me, how's it going? And, and I could say how it's going subjectively, but it's very hard to, if I'm two months in at this point to say what changes are really happening. Oh yeah. Two months of drop in a bucket. I'm very curious what you see after let's say four to six months. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. very, very generally curious if you are able to do take what Steve has learned because I have seen his physique improve dramatically over the years. Like, oh, yeah. and it's one of the rare guys that I can just clearly see he is very methodical with what he does and he mm -hmm. has a long-term plan because most guys are just kind of reactively doing stuff and i i'm even in that bucket myself like i'm kind of react oh let's do some strength it's not something that i but but steve is okay five-year goal like that that's at least how i imagine steve thinking because mm -hmm. he's competed as a bodybuilder so it's just very very focused and i have not seen many people that can make that much size improvement on stage mm -hmm. as, as he's done so i mean you're in good hands when it comes to that type of stuff i mean if, if anybody can do it i mean that 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 should be yeah if it's yeah, possible i think you, you, you know, you've done a good job there at picking yeah i was very and... impressed with his changes from uh 2017 competition to 2000 and uh, i got well yeah this past year right so crazy yeah that's crazy yeah, sure. man like that's insane like i just don't see those types of improvements and to be that lean again and retain that as a natural as well like that that's ridiculous are, are you bulking at the moment by the way like are you trying to like yeah so down? i cut down to like 181 uh, which is pretty lean for me at my height. And I don't really have a desire to be like, I mean, in my like peak, I was like 220, like 215, 220. And, and I don't really have a desire to, to get that much heavier again. But, uh, but yeah, I said, you know what, we'll just slowly bulk. Um, you know, I think so far it's been, I think we're about 10 weeks in and I've gone from 181 to about 187. So it's, you know, a little over half a pound a week, just kind of methodically taking it up. Um, and the first mesocycle was all just getting used to new movements. Like literally I'm doing like two movements that I've done regularly and everything else is either like completely new or I haven't done it in so long. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so we'll see. I, I mean, I, it's fun, which I said, like, even if I literally net nothing, I wouldn't regret it because it was experimentation and it's fun to do something different. Like I was literally doing the exact same routine for two years prior, go in, do the same thing. I'd get like a one rep PR every like four months, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, like life, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, all right, this is just something that's kind of interesting. That is awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious, like how far you can push um, your, your old lifts when you go back to your old routine with some of the, new yeah. side, if you kind of decide to do that, go back to your old routine and retest. I'm curious if you're able to squeeze out more improvements without directly working on those lifts. I mean, after a while, obviously, but yeah, um, after I get how used much to you for will, a few months. Yeah, like after you get back, I, I'd reckon you get some, and even if you put on, I mean, how would you know you put on? I mean, you could do a Dex or something, but how yeah, would you it's... ultimately know other than the performance that if you have a huge performance jump, let's say, yeah. then you could reasonably conclude that you put on some good size. It would be very, that's the thing. It's very hard to tell because a few reasons. Number one, Every lift that I've like hit PRs on and actually cared about, there have been specialization cycles, right? So like, like 225 overhead press, it's like, that wasn't just, I was training. It was, I was training and doing a ton of volume to the point that when I just went back to normal training for mm -hmm. it, I dropped like 10, 15 pounds very quickly because mm -hmm. I wasn't still maintaining that level of volume and technique and all that stuff. Um, so I'd have to not only go back to 
my like power building type training, but actually do another specialization cycle to see if I was, I, I guess you could just compare the same working weights, but that would be one reason that it's hard. Um, and then secondly, when the, the way I kind of said it is like, all right, so I've taken a million measurements at basically every weight I've been throughout the years. So if I was 181 and in six months, I'm let's say 195 or something, I would then compare it to the last time I was 195. And mm -hmm. if there was even one pound more muscle at the same weight, you'd hopefully detect something like my waistline would be a quarter inch smaller, or my arms would be an eighth of an inch smaller, like, or bigger, like something, right? Something mm -hmm. that's different. And if it's exactly the same, if I get to 195 and my waistline, my arms, my skin fold calipers, they're all the same. I think we can pretty much conclude at that point that nothing really happened, which again, even if that happens, I wouldn't fault Steve because that's what's been happening the last couple of years anyway, right? It's just, you're just kind of done. So um, yeah. yeah. Mm. I think visually that would be the, I mean, visually, if you could standardize the visuals uh, to really have the exact same 